Okay, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for joining this session this morning. I am delighted to introduce Mark Steed, Principal and CEO of Kellett School in Hong Kong. In this session, Mark will be focusing on the hugely important topic of well-being. Like all sessions, this is, this is being recorded, so you can always go back and watch it again later. Um, if you have any questions or comments throughout, please do use the chat function on Zoom and these will be addressed. Um, without further ado, I'm very pleased to hand over to Mark. Thank you, and uh, it's great to, great to be with you. Um, good afternoon, as it is here from here in, uh, in Hong Kong. Um, I'm going to be uh, talking today about um, uh, sort of school leadership and staff well-being and uh, particularly this idea of putting your own oxygen mask on first. So without more ado, let's, let's crack into this. So often people talk about models of leadership, but um, they don't often talk about travel disaster models of leadership. So I thought I would start there. So travel disasters give us sort of two major models of leadership. The first one is the sort of captain who's the last to leave and goes down with the ship um, in Titanic fashion. Um, and historians I know argue about whether Captain Smith actually went down with the, the, the thing, but the point remains the same. And the second one is, is the captain who puts his oxygen mask on first in order to land the plane. And I suppose my challenge to you as fellow school leaders is to sort of say, well, which, which one are you? Um, because it's very easy to fall into the sort of Titanic model, particularly given the challenges that we're all facing at the moment. So I'm, I'm going to sort of just take this uh, some, and share some ideas around this and really sort of uh, set up some advice um, and uh, sort of share some of the ways in which uh, I've begun to develop um, and put my oxygen mask on first, as it were. Um, but I thought I'd start by talking about uh, leading under pressure. And I'm going to share with you um, uh, one of my one of my favourite sporting moments uh, by way of introduction. And when Brazil gets into a situation like this, they're very, very difficult to beat. Yes, it would be cruel to say it, but uh, giving away a two-goal advantage could only happen once in the 1970 World Cup, but you know who did that. I don't think Brazil are going to do it here. Erdino, faced by Facchetti. Oh, it's not a bad ball for Pelé on the right side. It's Carlos Alberto. Oh, what a great goal that was! Carlos Alberto. So that was uh, Carlos Alberto's famous fourth goal in the World Cup final of 1970. And I love it because it, it, is, it is all about time on the ball. And when you watch that goal, uh, they're walking the ball around They're They're totally in control of the game. And you see the same when you sort of watch Roger Federer play, um, play tennis. You know, the ball is pinging around that sort of, you know, uh, you know, 100 kilometers per hour, but he can choose whether he's going to put it down the line or put it cross court, whether he's going to lob or whether he's going to drive. You know, he's got so much time on the ball. And I put that to you as a sort of challenge, you know, that how, as, how do we as school leaders get more time on the ball? Um, because we need to have that that way in which elite sportsmen and women actually dominate a game. And uh, they do so by having more time on the ball than others. So I put it to you that great school leaders have time on the ball. And so when we, when we look at the sort of attributes of, of, of a leader, you know, we could look at their mental capacity, their physical capacity, their emotional capacity, their spiritual capacity. And, and we could sort of work through and we could argue which is the most important one 
to be a leader. I asked some people at, uh, at work and they all said mental capacity is really, really important. And it might be, but it's, uh, uh, it, it's, it's a sort of, you know, it's, it's, it's one of many capabilities that school leaders need. And I, I came across this article, and I really commend it to you and the references there, and I'll, I'll share it again at the end. Um, this, is a, this is an article written by some high performance sports coaches, and they apply the principles of coaching elite sportsmen and women to being a, a, a sort of corporate athlete, as they put it, a, a leader. And, and they, their approach, if you like, is that, that corporate athletes, school leaders for us today, um, need to uh, draw on high level. If they're going to perform at high levels in the long run, they have to train in the same way that, uh, that top sportsmen do. So when we watch Federer, we see the end product but we don't see all the hours and hours of training and their article brings together these different capabilities you know physical capacity emotional capacity mental capacity and spiritual capacity and it says that actually the you know ideal performance state you know the peak performance comes when you have all of those in line so how do we as school leaders get all of that stuff in line. Well, what uh, Ler and Swartz argue is that you need to, to be in stressful, you learn from stressful situations. The whole point about being an elite athlete is that you, you can cope in stressful, high performance, you know, pressured situations, you know, a match point in Wimbledon final or a World Cup football final or whatever. And, you know, and we, you see people in those stressful situations, they either make it or they break. You know, the, 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 the England World Cup cricket win against New Zealand, you know, one of those moments, there were errors. Can you perform under pressure? And the key to this is, uh, you know, according to, to this, this theory, is that you have to oscillate between stress and recovery. If you live in a stressed, fully stressed environment, all you're going to, it's going to do is deplete your energy reserves and have a you know break down and reduce your performance. But if you can perform at stress and then recover, then you actually your performance will enhance. You'll cope better with stress the next time. So this is the sort of key to um, to peak performance. And uh, and one of the ways in which you can bring that about and, and you know, actually align these four areas is through rituals. And it's about routines. It's about following uh, different routines. And we see this with tennis players. They all have routines in terms of bouncing the ball and coping with stress, coping with the pressure ball and, and so on. So I suppose the challenge that comes out of this uh, article to us as school leaders is how much do we practice? Uh, how much have we built in intermittent recovery into our routine? And uh, I think one of the things that I take from this article is that we need to oscillate between stressful situations and we need to find times uh, you know, of recovery. And I suppose really what I'm going to try to do is to share some of the ways in which I've found uh, over, over the years to, to find space for, for that recovery. So here are, here are five ways that you know, I, you know, we can put on our oxygen mask. And I'm going to ask you, I'm going to give you my five. And actually, I'm going to uh, pause at the end of this section and say, well, look, what other ones are there? So be ready, put your suggestions on, on the chat and then we'll actually pause, you know, we'll come out of the presentation and you know, we, we can, we can in, in a virtual way, just, you know, uh, share those, those ideas. So my first one will be very unsurprising. I think, you know, it is about, um, uh, you know, the basics of diet, exercise and sleep. And, and, you know, there are these hugely challenging questions that come to us, you know, do we manage to eat regularly and healthily during 
the week during term? Um, and the answer isn't always yes to that. You know, and what can we do to, to make sure that we do? Do we manage to find time to exercise um, each day? Um, yes, no, where does that fit? How do you fit it in? Uh, is it the first thing that disappears? And do you get enough sleep? Um, these are really sort of challenging areas for us as, as, as school leaders. And uh, one of the things that we often do is sacrifice those basics because we're trying to, to do our, our, our day job. My, my second tip is, again, it's not, not rocket science, um, but it's about managing your time and about, you know, prioritizing. And uh, for the last 30 years, I've used this, this grid, as so many people do, um, about prioritization. It's so simple. Um, and it's about, you know, focusing on uh, what is important, but what is not urgent. So it's about being ahead of the curve rather than behind the curve. Um, so, and, and it's about also losing the work that we don't need to do ourselves or, or just not, you know, not doing it. So, you know, these boxes at the bottom, the not important box boxes, again, these are things that we find ourselves doing. Um, probably for the wrong reasons, and they can fill our time. The important work needs to be done in good time, in a timely way. And we need to keep the urgent, important box sort of pretty much free um, so that we can cope with emergencies. Because, you know, we're dealing with people and emergencies happen all the time. And I think one of the problems that we've faced, and if we reflect on the last 18 months, um, you know, where we are and what we've had to deal with over, you know, COVID is that, that COVID, I don't know about in your school, but it certainly is, that's filled my, my urgent important box on a massive scale um, for, for most of this, most of the last 18 months that, you know, we've had new regulations from the Hong Kong Education Bureau, or we've had changes and so on. And there has been less capacity for us to keep free for emergencies. And, you know, and that, and that takes a huge strain. Um, and so that urgent important box, you know, which you have to, things will go wrong. Um, and you know, I, I've had to, this week, I've, we've had a, a terrible tragedy in school. Um, one, of, one of my staff was tragically killed in a motorbike accident last Friday. And the capacity, having capacity to be able to handle that. And to be honest, it, it, if that had happened, you know, we've, we've coped and we're coping and we're, we're there, but only because for the first time in 18 months, we've, we've had some stability around COVID and what's going on. And we haven't had to rewrite the timetable in the last month or so. But, you know, so we are, we are coping and things will go wrong, hopefully not as, as tragic as, as that particular current. So, so manage your time, prioritize. And, and then the second one is manage your time, you know, have a day for you. And I, I realize I, this is my 20th year as a head teacher and, um, and I've, I've still got a way to go. So I, you know, I think that, that you know, if it, it is a marathon and not a sprint. And you, one of the things I learned a long time ago and I've, I've done for the last 18 years is that I have not had appointments on the last day of the week on uh, usually Friday it was Thursday when it was in in when I was in Dubai and having that day it doesn't mean I don't do anything that day it's a day that I control my diary my PA cannot put anything in my diary that day without asking my explicit permission to do so um, other things fill up along the way so i keep fridays for my work for work that projects that i need to do whether that might be preparing board papers or whether it's having meetings or whether it's going to visit a colleague in another school or whatever i try and keep and that gives me space and capacity that i can draw on 
if I need to. It gives me that little bit of flex in my week in order to do that. And, and I, some of you will be sitting there saying, I can't do that. And the answer is you can, because actually you can choose what days of the week your senior leadership team meetings happen on. And they don't happen on a Friday in my school. It doesn't matter what day of the week it is you take, but taking some time that is yours, carving it out in, so that you can get down to a block of work and clear the inbox or whatever, really, really important. The second thing that I've recently started doing, and I, it makes an enormous difference, is I've given up on to-do lists. And instead, I schedule tasks. And I put them in my diary of what I'm going to do, what needs doing at different times. And so I would schedule them in. And it might be I set aside a couple of hours to prepare board meetings. And sometimes that might be on a Friday, but sometimes it might not. Or, you know, so putting schedules in, using scheduling rather than, th and there's some, there's some very good Harvard Business School articles around that, that scheduling is far more productive because you have, a P, you, know, you, you don't sort of prevaricate by looking at the list and thinking, what am I going to do? So they're my, they're my tips, if you like, summarized on that, on the screen around how to, how to manage your time. My, my third, my third, um, uh, tip of you know for putting your oxygen mask on first is to is to trust your team um and and you know in order to do that you've really got to ask yourself you know can can i trust my team do i trust my team do i do i am i looking over their shoulder am i actually um doing uh you know allowing them to do their jobs um and you know i can give an example of that um you know, of a, a, a sort of a few weeks ago, we um, before Easter, we we had the the prospect of our year eight students being put into government quarantine. A whole class of them, uh, their teacher had tested positive, and they were deemed to be in close contact. And this this was sort of you know a sort of the classic sort of you know difficult situation to manage on lots and lots of levels um it was an emergency situation we had to deal with it um and when you break down what we did you know everybody took their role everybody dealt with their area and we didn't have i didn't have time or energy or capacity to look at what anyone else was doing we all just had to as a team gel take on our roles and you know the whatsapp groups were pinging around but we we were we were there handling this situation as it evolved communicating with those people that needed communicating with and so that was a, a particularly challenging situation um and to be honest i've had to do the same in the last week i mean we you know as a team i've had to, you know as a team we've had to work together i've had to trust my team uh, dealing with a tr you know, tragic you know, death of a, of a colleague, um, we've all had to just you know, do, follow our roles, um, be very, you know, time on the ball, everyone just deal with your role, do your job, and the whole thing will pull together because we haven't got capacity for anybody to be micromanaging this. So you have to trust your team. There is a happy ending to the, to the story uh, with, with the, with the uh, year four students they actually in the end were um released and uh, not they didn't actually end up going in but uh, that was a great near miss my fourth tip is to um is to switch off your smartphone and uh, i think i i love tech i love technology i, I speak a lot about technology at conferences and i i, I you know i take the lead in, in school in it but I do think you know, it's important to have a digital detox and to actually totally disconnect. Um, and I do try and do that in the summer for a couple of weeks and just come off Twitter and come off all the other stuff. Um, one way that really makes a difference, I think that's a great tip and uh, is, to, is to turn off all the notifications if, if you're doing that because those sort of little red buttons, they, they drag you in, they draw you in, 
And it's a really good thing if you're going to do a digital detox and, you, you know, sometimes we just have to leave our phones on. Uh, you know, I, I would sometimes disconnect my email account from my phone and just disable it so that actually the work emails aren't coming through. The out of office can take the strain. Um, and then finally, you know, my other tip on digital detox is to is to switch off your smartphone at night. Um, I, I schedule, um, I, I have my phone so that it's on do not disturb mode um, from eight o'clock at night to seven o'clock in the morning. Um, so I'm not being phoned through. It will let you in, you know, if your children, anyone in your favorites will get through um, on, on, those, on those times, so, you know, if they phone and if somebody phones enough times, you can trigger it to do that. But I, I really do think it's a really important thing. And that, that ties into getting a good night's sleep. And my fifth and final way of putting an oxygen mask on uh, is, uh, and this is, this is new to me, is, um, is to, to get coaching and have a coach. Uh, 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 and I, I've only started doing this um, in the last year. And uh, I have a coaching session once a fortnight, uh, once a week if I need it. Um, and uh, I have a regular coach um, and uh, we work on all sorts of things. And um, actually we've put in the budget for the whole of my senior team next year. are gonna have an allowance so they can arrange their own coaching. Um, I'm not arranging it for them, they can choose their own coach uh, and so on. Um, and I, I think this is really helpful because it's it's a it's a really good way to work through um, areas where you're very emotional. Um, it's it's a really good way to to just work through strategies. Um, uh, I was uh, having I was getting myself into a real uh, fog about a particular colleague. I was very very frustrated. I didn't feel this colleague was pulling his or her weight and. I, I went through this and I was getting myself into, you know, really stewed up about this. And it was really useful to be able to um, go, to, you know, sit down with a coach um, online. So I have an online coach and just work through exactly what it is that was really triggering my buttons there. And, and I, I think that was really, really helpful. And then I was able to go into a situation as a school leader and manage that without, uh, without actually having to uh, deal with, you know, all of my personal emotion around the whole thing. Um, and I think that, you know, in Mark Lepard at um, BSAT wrote a really good TES article a couple of weeks ago, uh, pretty much on this this topic but I think one of the things he talked about was dropping the guilt and I think as school leaders we find it really difficult to drop the guilt we feel guilty about switching off um, and um, I think you know working those sorts of things through with a coach is, is really important so they're my five. So I'm going to pause there and uh, and hopefully, um, you know, Laura can can sort of feed me some questions at this stage or read some comments out um, from from where we are. So we've had one question that's come in that says, do you think the coach should be from in or out? I can't hear you, Laura. I don't know whether anyone else can. Sorry. Can you hear me, Mark? Mark, can you hear me? They can hear you. I can't. You can't hear me still. Go on, you keep going. I'll, I'll... Okay, so we've had a few questions that come in. Someone has said, um, How do you identify an external online coach? Um, I just Googled it, to be honest. <laughs> I, just, I just found someone. There's lots of good people around. And, you know, there, there are people within, you know, the, the school. I mean, my, my coach isn't, isn't tied to education. Um, and I think there's advantages because in terms of that. Um, but there are some very, very good 
coaches around who do you know who offer this stuff who you know a lot of former heads have gone into executive coaching um i i googled it and just found someone in in hong kong who does it um and i, I find it really helpful i think that, that's a really good good area so yeah uh, brilliant thank you um someone said i noticed a jazz book on your shelf recreation time music reading walks in the woods that must also form part of your toolkits yeah i, I think i think it, all of that stuff's really important finding some some uh and, and not feeling bad about it um i think you know i'll, I'll be very personal i mean we, we had a, we i mean I, I had one of the shittiest days of my career on friday uh you know learning that a colleague had died and having to do staff meetings and tell the staff that this had happened and managing and preparing for the students. We managed to get the students home before anybody, it was, you know, it, it all, all actually came alive. And, you know, I, I you know, we, we went through that, but I, I really set about switching off on Saturday because I knew that Sunday night was going to be difficult. I was going to have to phone, um, the, the, the family on behalf, you know, an official phone call from the school. And I knew that the staff meeting and pupils on Monday morning was going to be terrible, but you've just got to find, you know, and, and actually say, right, actually I am, this is, this is, if I don't have some downtime now and guilt free, um, I will not be able to do my job properly on Sunday night, Monday morning. And I think that, you know, you've got to be able to do that. And, um, I'm not sure I'd have had the confidence to do that earlier in my career, but I think, I think, and that's part, partly why I'm sort of breaking cover and being very honest about it, because I think we deal with these situations and I think it's, you know, and people say, you know, I mean, you know, it's very easy to judge in, you know, in these sort of things. And, you know, there may have been people who saw me on Saturday, you know, relaxing and so on, because I, but, you know, I needed to do it. It was a very stressful Friday. It was a very stressful, stressful Sunday evening. It was a very stressful Monday. And, you know, and I think that it, to take time in between, I think allows one to, to, to actually cope. Um, given that, you know, we're all pretty depleted at the moment anyway, coping with what we're doing on a, on a day to day basis, which is way worse than we would normally be. Thank you, Mark. Um, lots of comments here about um, how how many useful strategies and <clears throat> how practical your your tips have been. Um, someone has said they fully agree about the benefits of coaching. Um, some more comments about how practical your suggestions are, and thanks thanks to you for that. Well, I'll, I'll, I tell you what, I'll crack on because I'm conscious of time and it's probably worth finishing it. And then if people want to email me and stuff, we can do a bit more. So I'm, I'm going to sort of crack on to the, the next piece of the, um, to the thing. So, um, I, 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 and again, this is practical. And I, again, I don't think I could have said this or done this earlier in my career. So I think there'll be people out there who've worked with me earlier in my career going, well, I never used to do that. Um, I, I think it's really important that, that heads model, school leaders model well-being behaviour. And, um, and I, I, this has been a bit of a theme for me for, the, if, you know, for quite a while now. Um, but the first one is the really tough one, uh, leave work on time. Um, I, I actually have to get into work. Well, we, all the teachers have to be in at half seven in, in Hong Kong and our school day ends at 3.30. And I try very, very hard to leave between 3.30 and 4. Um, I don't schedule any meetings um, with my permanent staff that, you know, that are, you know, that who are, aren't teachers um, beyond four o'clock. Um, I try and put everything into that school day. And I try to leave on time. And even if I know that I'm going to go home and do a bit of work at home or do a call to the UK because of the time difference or whatever, or as it was this evening to, to do this presentation. But I think leaving work on time gives others permission to leave on time as well. And I think that's really important. We have to trust our colleagues. And I suppose the associated one with that is, is this idea of holding as many meetings as you can within the core week in your core hours. Now, sometimes you have to, there are some meetings you just have to have before or after school or, you know, outside those core hours. And that's just the way it is. I mean, yeah, and obviously as a 
as a school principal, you know, I have a lot of evening meetings with governors. So I really don't feel, you know, I know that tomorrow night I will be in a governor's meeting till probably nine, 10 o'clock at night, having started at you know, 7.15. So I'm not going to feel guilty about walking out that door at half three, four o'clock. Uh, and I think that's really important, but as much as you can get into the core day is worth doing. And then the, the other one, and I, I really do model this um, at the weekends and in school holidays, I, I use my out of office and I, I put it on um, at uh, usually on at four o'clock on the Friday and it comes back on at seven o'clock in the morning. I put it on the official outside principal CEO email, which is the sort of public facing one. I put it on my own school internal facing email address. Um, and I, I genuinely try to stick with it um, because I think, I think email is, permission, is pernicious. Um, interestingly, in the crisis at the weekend, I, I left it, I, I left, I didn't put my out of office on because I think it was important to, in that context to be seen to be available. Um, and uh, and that's, that's important too. But generally, I, and obviously in, in the holidays and so on, I think it's really, really important. You need to model it. And I, may, I force my senior management team to put theirs on. I say, you must put them on. You need a break. You must have a weekend. You must, you must have a holiday. Um, and then, um, again, another massive bugbear of mine is people sending emails you know, out of hours. And my analogy for this is, 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 again, a sporting one, which is that, you know, you have no right to put the ball back in someone else's court. You know, if you reply to that email, uh, you're putting the ball back into someone else's court. You're making them work at the weekend or in the evening. And I think that's that's offside. Um, and this, the next statistic will will is you know is the proof that you, if ever you thought you know an email curfew you know was was a waste of time. Um, when I was uh, principal at Berkhamsted in the UK, um, we introduced an email seven to curfew seven till seven, and we reduced overall email traffic by thirty seven percent. What would you give to have, you know, a, a reduction of your emails, number of emails that you had to deal with each day? Because people thought and people could, you know, you can use, you can do the work. If you want to, if you want to do the work, you can, you can use the delayed send option. Um, and I'll just tell you where it is, because for those of you who aren't sort of techie, if you go into the email and then go into options and then do delay delivery and then do not deliver before seven o'clock. You can answer all of your emails that you like over the weekend uh, or in the evening, but you're not putting the ball into someone else's court. And I think that's, that's really, really important because you're then looking after the welfare of colleagues. And uh, my last one is think before you copy in on an email, because, you know, this is this this is again, this just clutters up people's inboxes, people copying in the principle because I want you to hear that I've done this or whatever. It's absolutely rubbish. You've got to stop it. You've got to nail your head on it. Um, and perhaps people could put some stuff in the chat around some some of that stuff. I'm just going to move on to my final section, which is on who's responsible for, for staff well-being. And I think there's a real debate about whether, you know, there's, whether it's the school or whether it's, um, uh, whether it's the teacher. And, um, you know, th there's a sort of culture in the wider landscape at the moment that, that well-being is all about yoga and yoga and about putting on all these well-being activities and so on. Um, and I don't think it is. I think it's about having a, a sensible culture within the school. And, you know, when, when TES did their well-being survey last, last term, you know, it was, you know, really quite worrying how, how many teachers feel that their, their life is unsustainable and the stress levels aren't sustainable. Um, so, you know, how do you get this, this work-life balance? And um, certainly, you know, I, I think one of the one of the challenges is that you know term time is tough, um, but one of the one of the things that we have as 
as teachers, we have a different flow to, to other industries because we get a lot more holiday than most people. And we, we mustn't forget that. We actually have chance to recharge our batteries at regular intervals through the year. So yeah, I do, you know, my tough love line is, you know, we've got a lot to fit into 180 days, uh, which is sort of roughly, you know, your average school year. But I do think there are responsibilities and um, you know, the, you know, the, the school has a responsibility to create a culture. And I think you can, you can do that by making sure it's supportive and open, safe, and, you know, and also create a sense of belonging. And I think the school has an enormous responsibility in terms of managing time and workload. And I mean, schools can really screw up people's lives if they put all the reporting deadlines at the same time, or that if they, you know, they don't think about, you know, the structure way timetables are structured and, and so on. And we can put, we can take the sum of the strain by putting in administration, we can put in teaching assistance, we can, we can support. So I think the school has a responsibility around those things. But I think, yeah, and this is getting forgotten, teachers have a responsibility too. And I think that, that, that teach, the teachers and, yeah, and you know, I mean, middle leaders, senior leaders, you know, have a responsibility to, you know, to do the basics, to, you know, to look after their physical uh, health. And they also have a responsibility to uh, look after them, the, their mental health as well. Um, and I think, you know, I think investing in a, in a, in a coach or a counsellor um, when you're going through the difficult stages in your, in your personal life is very much the, the responsibility of, of teachers. And I think we need to get back to a balance. You know, there's a culture in some schools and, you know, with some colleagues where they think, you know, what is the school going to do to solve my next problem? And, and you know, there's, my answer is you've got to meet me halfway here. You've got to look after your physical and mental health. I will try and look after, you know, the culture, the context and, and you know, and, and make sure the time commitments and support are in place. So, that, you know, that's, and I think that's a real debate. And I think it's a debate we haven't had enough and we need to, you know, we really need to open that debate up a little bit more. So I, I would very much like, like to do that as, as part of this. So um, I'm going to come out of the presentation there and, uh, and uh, hopefully we've got a few minutes just to, to deal with some of the, some of the comments. Um, so we've received a few comments of, and questions already. Um, Richard has said, well-being is as much, if not more, about removing the barriers to well-being as it is about the band-aids, which is an interesting comment. Yeah, I, I'd agree. I mean, I think the yoga and yoga are the band-aids, you know, if to, to, to use those analogies. And I think that it's the, you know, it's the, you've got to try and deal with the symptoms. But I think you've got to remember that, you know, the school is not always the, the whole problem here. Um, people live complex lives, they've got families, they've got family situations which are totally outside the control of the school. There are, you know, they're, they're, they have their own sort of relationships which are out of their thing. There's, there's, they're, they're, but there is a culture for some people to say the school has to be there to solve every single problem in every single crisis. And I think this is made even more difficult in the international schools because we can't always get home. You know, we are at a distance. You can't be at everybody's, you know, baps, baps, um, baptism, bar mitzvah or whatever. You know, you, you, you have to, you make a sacrifice going abroad. Uh, and we've really felt that in the last 18 months. You know, we've been very isolated from families and so on. Um, so I think that that made, and that's made things even more difficult. People have thrown things even back, further back on the school because to some extent the, the travel situation has has made it feel as if it's work that's stopping me seeing my family, when actually it isn't. It's, you know, it's government restrictions, or in the case of living in Hong Kong, three weeks in quarantine. So it's, you know, it, it, these are things that are outside the school's remit, but got, get sort of thrown at the school, and, you know, and, and we, we're sort of expected to solve. And I think, to some extent, we have to work together on that one. Thank you, Mark. Um, another question that's come through is how do you feel your board can practically support you to ensure you're looking after your well-being? Um, well, I, I think it's really important that, I mean, things, they're practical things like they, 
I mean, schools should pay for coaching for senior leaders, I think, you know, so that that they can put that in place. And that and that's a you know, um, I think you know, and I, I sort of allocate a budget to that. I think also, I think you know, there's a bit of managing up that we need to do as school principals as well. I mean, in terms of um, scheduling of board meetings when board papers have to go out, these can create, you know, the. We, we don't have marking crises and you know report writing crises in senior leadership team. We have we have board papers have to be out at a certain time, and I think understanding around that, you know, in the you know when you know if a board paper is perhaps missing or goes out late, um, which you know frankly we've done in the last couple of months because we've you know there's been so you know the school has been you know stretched to its limit and. Um, and that's because things are in such a, a difficult sort of context. Um, so I think that understanding and, you know, having that being able to as a head go and say, look, we're under a lot of pressure here, you know, and we, you know, we're having these, these weekly battles. We, you know, we've been crisis management mode for 18 months now in Hong Kong and you know, we might not meet every deadline, um, but we'll do our best. And we need a bit of understanding if we don't. Thank you. <coughs> Um, how do you communicate your way of working to parents? Any objections to you not being available 24-7? Yeah, well, I think there's a, there's a difference here whether you're a boarding school or whether you're a day school. I um, mean, you know, let's just put that on the table because, you know, I think if you're, you know, even at Berkhamsted, if the boarding side didn't stick to the email curfew when dealing with parents. But at Berkhamsted, we did, um, we did create a culture where... Um, parents didn't expect a reply if you sent a letter you know an email in after seven o'clock and particularly if it was after seven o'clock on a friday um you wouldn't necessarily get a reply and you know you'd get the out of office and you got the reply on the monday morning um and and i think you know it's about gauging whether things are really urgent and they're not usually um and when things are really urgent in which case nobody's actually, I mean, everyone just rallies around on those guys. I mean, you know, if, if, if you've got a, a pastoral crisis or whatever, um, you know, people aren't going to whinge that you're, you're doing it. I mean, but it got to, you know, I mean, I remember at Berkshire, I remember somebody, you know, putting a really, you know, one of the funniest emails I think I've ever seen was somebody sent an email around at five o'clock on a Saturday to all, all staff in the senior school and said, I'm really sorry for sending an email around, but we won the nationals, you know, sort of type thing. And it, it was that sort of great sense of, look, you know, this isn't going to wait till Monday morning, you know, we've just won the nationals. And uh, I think that sort of, you know, that's fine. It's, a, it's this principle of not putting the ball in someone else's court that's the really important one. You see, if you want to get the work done, do a delayed send. If you want to do it, you know, there's nothing you did wrong. If you want to work over the weekend, organize your time, you're a grown up. But don't don't expect a response from me just because you've decided to do a load of emails on a 10 o'clock on a Saturday night. Thank you. Um, how do you go about switching off during this pandemic when we may be notified at the weekend or 3 a.m. that someone has tested positive? Yeah, I mean, that's it, isn't it? I mean, you just, you know, I mean, I think that's why we're all knackered and, you know, and we're all, you know, it's it's gradually, you know, ground us down, you know, the, the length of it. But I think, you know, I think when we all went at it rather fast, didn't we? I mean, I used to do a lot of marathon running, you know, in the previous body. And, you know, if you go off too fast, you know, you don't have to hit a wall somewhere down the line. But if you go off at a steady pace, um, you can adjust and, you know, a lot more easily. And, you know, there are times when, you know, I've, I've been, you know, absolutely on my knees, you know, at the, the sort of equivalent of 23 miles because we didn't go off at a sensible pace. So I think you've got to manage expectations. Um, and, and part of that is just, you know, getting to the point where you sort of say, well, look, I need a break. I need my team need a break, and you know we're going to have a break. Um, and um, and I've got a lot of staff, you know, today who you know my senior team, you know, they need a break this weekend, you know, and I really do, you know, I mean, hope they get one. Um, but I think, and I think it is just taking the time, not feeling guilty, 
you know, I mean, if they don't answer an email this weekend, that's great. I think we'll have time for one more question. Um, do you think her teachers should be expected as part of their contracts to work on Saturdays or during the weekend, whenever, wherever that may be? I, I, well, I think that depends. I mean, you know, I've worked, you know, for 25 years in boarding schools with, you know, Saturday school and full on. And I, I think the really interesting thing about the international school community is there's a lot of people who have come into it from a maintained sector, sort of, you know, where it's heavily unionized and it's very fixed hours. Um, I, I think as long as schools are transparent about what what the understanding is when what you know you know, owners, if you're a school principal or or school, you know, school principals, you know, what are your core outs? What are you expected to do? What are we doing? Look, we all do stuff at weekends. We all, you know, I mean, we all we all work at weekends. It, but the, the, I think it's about creating culture where if I choose not to, I don't have to. Or if I'm going to have, I mean, you know, we have a school, you know, strategy day, board strategy day, senior leadership day. It's a Saturday morning, but we all know. I mean, you can plan. It's, you know, it's, it's in the calendar. You know, it's coming up. I think, you know, it's, 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 it's when you don't get a chance to have that downtime. And, and I think, you know, you can, you can do it. But yeah, I, I, look, if you sign a contract saying, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, it is your choice as it is with a teacher who works in a boarding school. I mean, I'm not the person to talk to. I work seven days a week for, for 20 years in a you know, boarding school as a housemaster and, you know, some, you know, came off a Saturday night duty at 10, 30, 11, you know, um, you know, I mean, basically the evening duty finished when match of the day ended and I would have to be at chapel at 8.30 the next morning. I might, might get six hours sleep. But I signed up for that. And I, I, I think we mustn't lose sight of that. You know, you make choices. You choose to work in a boarding school, you know, with full boarding. That's your choice. I made that choice. I, I think with hindsight, I probably made the wrong choice. But, you know, it's, you know, I can't undo it. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Mark. I think that's all the time we have for questions. I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to add to sort of finish off. No, I just wonder whether it, I, I'll just um, I'll just just for the for the recording as much as anything um, share um, share that those references. Um, so they're the they're the they're the things I've um, referenced in 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 the, in the talk. So if people want to do that, they can see that in the recording. And and these are my these are my contact details. Um, uh, I'm very easy to track down. Um, uh, if you put independent head in and without a space, you usually find me fairly quickly in one way or another. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, we've had some brilliant feedback already from the attendees. I know that it's been a hugely valuable session. Loads and loads of practical takeaways um, for people to think about. So thank you very much. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining us today and for your comments and your questions in the chat box. At 11.15, there are a series of roundtable sessions that will be taking place. So do go and check them out and join any that might be of interest. Um, but otherwise, I will be drawing this session to a close now. Thank you very much for attending. Thank you.